Welcome back to Fox Explainer. Today, I will explain the 2018 ancient adventure film Alpha. Spoilers ahead. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Watch out and take care. 20,000 years ago, in prehistoric Europe, Tao, the leader of a small group of hunters, is getting ready to attack a group of steppe bison. They make a wall of spears that makes the bison run off a cliff. Three of them stay behind, though, and one of the bulls goes after Ta's son Kida. After hitting him hard with its horns, it drags him to the edge of the cliff. When Tao hits the beast with his spear, Kida falls into the abyss. All of this starts a week before, when the teenagers of the tribe are put to the test by making spears. Kida and his friend Kappa are the only ones who pass, so they will go on the last hunting trip before winter. As part of the ceremony that shows they are now adults, the other men beat them up to teach them that pain will follow them, and the local shaman blesses them by the campfire. Later, Kida hears Tao and his mother Ro talking while he is pretending to be asleep. Ro doesn't think Kida is ready to hunt because he leads with his heart, not his spear. Tao, on the other hand, thinks Kida needs to do his part and show the tribe what he's made of. After saying goodbye to their families and getting the shaman's blessing, the hunting party leaves the next morning. Ro gives Kida an extra piece of fur as a safety token. The group starts their journey across the land by following the sacred path. Their ancestors made a series of sculptures out of rocks that leave a path for them to follow. The handprints on the rocks show them the way to the hunting ground. During the trip, they meet up with another hunting group led by Ta's old friend Roman, who just lost his son. Then, they both start traveling together. Kida tries to show his father how smart he is whenever he has the chance, but he can't start a fire and can't bring himself to kill the boar that the other men have caught, so he feels like a failure. One night, they are reading by the fire when they hear something behind them. They quickly move into a defensive position. When nothing happens, they quickly stop looking, which turns out to be a mistake. A cave lion jumps out of nowhere and grabs Kappa, taking him away to eat. The next morning, the men build a caring as a memorial service for Kappa. The caring is a mound that looks like a person's spirit going to the afterlife. The trip keeps going, stopping only to hunt and rest. When they find a big, safe cave to sleep in one night, Tao makes Kida get a tattoo of the same constellations he has. This way, Kida will always know how to get home. After a few days, they find a trail of trash that leads them to a group of steppe bison, which brings the story back to the beginning. Kida tries to hold onto a rough edge of the cliff as he falls, but he slips and lands on a further ledge, where he breaks his leg and passes out. Tao tries to climb down to save his son, but his fellow hunters stop him, telling him it's too late. While the men bring the sleds to move the bison, Tao stays at the edge of the cliff and cries because he won't believe what is happening. Now that the hunt has been split evenly, this group goes home on their own, while Ta's group camps one more night before trying to convince their leader that it's time to move on. The next morning, Tao builds another cairn while he still keeps crying. A vulture lands on Kida many hours after the party is over and tries to eat him. This wakes him up, and after he wrings the bird's neck to get it off of him, he realizes what's going on. Kida tries to climb down, dragging his broken leg behind him. But there aren't enough rough edges for him to hold onto, so he has to hang there for a long, painful moment. Soon after, a storm comes and starts flooding the ground below him. Kida realizes that he has to do what he has to do, so he lets go of the rock and falls into the water, where he passes out again. When he wakes up the next morning, it's no longer raining and the water has stopped rising. Kida slowly makes his way back to the top of the cliff, where he finds the memorial his father left for him. But Kida throws it out of anger when he realizes he's been left alone and has to find his own way home. Kida begins traveling alone. He eats bugs, fills his canteen with any poodle he can find, and sleeps in the trees at night to avoid being eaten. When a pack of wolves find him in the middle of the day, Kida runs to a tree again and stabs one of them when it grabs his leg. He finally climbs to safety after stabbing the last wolf. He stays on top of the tree until the wolves get tired of waiting, at which point all but the one Kida hurt leave. He gets a spear ready to kill it, but he just can't do it. Instead, he decides to ignore it. But Kida can't do that either because the wolf's painful whimpering is too loud. Kida decides to help, so he ties the wolf's nose so he doesn't get bitten, picks it up, and takes it to the lake so it can clean its wound. Because there are hyenas nearby, they can't stay there for long, so Kida has to carry the wolf again until they find a cave where they can sleep safely. The next morning, Kida finds a mortar near a pile of bones. 
He uses it to make a sow from plants and puts it on his foot while the wolf frees his nose. Hida decides to give the animal some of his water because it is acting well. After a lot of growling, the wolf finally agrees to take the water. Hida even cleans the wound with the fur that his mother gave him and gives the wolf some of the worms he finds. But eating only worms isn't enough to keep them alive, so Kita finally works up the courage to go on his first hunt. He kills a rabbit with a rock and even starts a fire to cook it. The wolf tries to take the rabbit from him, but Kita pushes him away quickly. He remembers what his father has taught him about being a leader. He shows that he is in charge by always eating first and then feeding the wolf. But no matter how much he talks to it, the wolf still won't let him touch it. Winter is coming soon, and Kita needs to get home before it starts snowing. He doesn't think he can do it without his father, but he has to try. After getting enough supplies and fighting with the wolf to get his fur back, Kita leaves the cave and starts walking back. He is frustrated that the wolf won't leave him alone no matter how many times he tells it to. Kita gives up in the end and decides to travel with the wolf. He even teaches it to come over when he whistles. The first time they try to hunt together, it doesn't work at all. But after a few tries, they figure out how to time their attacks and catch their prey without much trouble. At night, Kita uses the constellation tattoo on his hand to make sure they are going in the right direction. The wolf starts sleeping next to him and even lets him touch it now that he has earned the wolf's trust. After spending the afternoon swimming and fishing in the lake, Kita decides to call the wolf Alpha. Because their trip is taking so long, winter catches up with them and it starts to snow. One night, while they are eating by the fire, they are approached by a pack of wolves who turn out to be Alpha's family. Kita tells Alpha to come with them because she knows what it's like to miss your family. This means that Alpha has to continue traveling alone. As time goes on, snowstorms happen more often. This makes it hard for Kita to make much progress each day, especially when he has a nightmare about Tao coming home and telling Ro bad news. After a few days of walking through yet another storm, he finds Alpha and its pack. As he runs toward them, the ice breaks under his feet, and he falls into the freezing water. As his mother's fur and most of his equipment float away, Kita hits the ice with his knife and breaks it enough for Alpha to pull him out. They start traveling together again, and later that night, Kita sleeps hugging Alpha to warm up his freezing body. After going a few more miles, they find a track that leads to a hut, but the owner has already died from the cold. Even though there is no food, Kita grabs a bow and arrow to go hunting, ignoring Alpha's worry when he suddenly starts coughing up blood. Later, the two find themselves stuck between a rock and a hard place. Hyenas are after them, but a very dangerous storm is coming their way, so they run until they find a cave to hide in. The place isn't empty, though, because there is a cave lion there that won't hesitate to attack them. Alpha fights it hard while Kita puts the arrow on his bow and focuses on hitting the right spot. He is able to kill the lion and save Alpha, but Alpha comes out of the fight badly hurt. When they start moving slowly again in the middle of the snowstorm, they find the sculpture that marks the sacred path, so Kita knows they must be close. When the northern lights show up one night, he knows that his ancestors must be helping them. This makes his hope grow. Alpha is too weak to keep going, though, and one day he just gives up. Kita doesn't want to leave his friend behind, so he picks up the wolf and starts to carry him, even though he is also weak and keeps coughing up blood. Because things are so bad, Kita eventually gives up as well. But then, in a dream, he remembers the conversation he overheard his parents having the night before they left. This gives him hope. Tao old Ro that Kita is stronger than even he knows, so that she wouldn't worry. Kita wakes up and picks up Alpha again. His father's faith in him gives him new strength, and he carries it through the storm until they get back to his tribe. Nobody can believe what they are witnessing, and Tao is crying as he tells his son how pleased he is of him before taking both of them into a tent to be cared for. Nobody can believe what they are seeing. When the shaman checks Alpha after Kita has been treated and fed, he swiftly comes to the conclusion that the creature's issue is that Alpha is actually a female and is in the process of giving birth. The puppies are all delivered without incident and in good health, and the community gladly accepts them as new members of the family. After a number of years have passed, when the young pups have matured into full-fledged adults, the hunters pair them up with other wolves to serve as their hunting partners for the final hunt before winter. That's all for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more and hit the like button to help me out, and also leave a comment. If you want me to explain your favorite film. Until next time take care.